And then, uh, so we, we talked about the full wave field, gas cloud imaging, and so where the uh, S-wave data is uh, essentially immune to the fluid content in the, in the pore spaces, unlike the PP data. And so-called stealth reservoirs, invisible reservoirs, like, like the Alba example here, where it was quite clearly uh, impossible to see on the uh, conventional stack section of the B-wave data, but stands out like a sore thumb on the uh, converted wave data. And then most recently, uh, fields and discoveries where single azimuth data, narrow azimuth data, doesn't provide uh, what um, BP coined as development quality data. Uh, good data good enough to actually manage the development of the reservoirs. And so uh, a lot of the initial work on, uh, especially in the uh, Mediterranean BP, uh, was, was looking at these, these multi -asymptons. And so uh, uh, we see applications for that with push and volume data. So this is the inside, and taken from a talk you gave at PETEX a couple of years ago. And it, it, it's genuinely true. The physics, I believe, is irresistible because you can get uh, all sorts of receiver assets. You can get all azimuths. It's a very quiet environment, as they showed. You can do up to going down, go, going wave field discrimination. You're relatively immune to the near surface, so you've got less load of shutdown. Uh, you can get resources anywhere, and in producing fields, that's particularly important. Uh, if you go for permanent systems, you can have absolute receiver repeatability in terms of position and coupling. Uh, again, with permanent systems, you can be always listening. You can look at converted wave, and you could actually look at uh, permanent sources. And the result of, it, of this better physics, let's say, is hugely improved data quality, resolution, fault delineation. You get better uh, signal to noise ratio, so your 4D noise threshold is less. And you can, with permanent systems, get cheap fast repeats. You produce the movies, the Valhalla movies are pretty impressive. Uh, and monitoring cetaceans, earth disturbances, earth disturbances, etc. So, so basically, uh, this was from a short say uh, on the next five years in geoscience, and it was essentially to paraphrase the conclusion: you ain't seen nothing yet in terms of uh, what do you expect? At least a 25 to 10 to 1 improvement in return? Or was it oil price? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> True. And so, uh, anyway, so, so that is why, why ocean bottom cable, ocean bottom data is better than uh, uh, stream. So, 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 has the technology been improved? and uh, what's new. And so improved technology, we have uh, MEM sensors being used offshore. Uh, we use them, uh, sort of miles and a copy break, they, they, they've got a, a SIRSAL MEM sensor out in operation. And you've got uh, geophone accelerometers uh, in the uh, Western GECO's QC based system. And the, the, the MEM sensor that we use gives a much better low end response than some of the streamer systems that have been used uh, in the past. Um, there's been improvements in the actual recording practice. Uh, we've gone for boy-based recording to allow us to get a, a much more cost-efficient operation. Uh, the slide on the right here is from Western GECO where they show this snake cable where they reduce the number of tiebacks to the recording vessel, again to improve operational performance, allow greater flexibility uh, in the uh, actual operation, reducing cost, improving performance. Um, there's been the development uh, of the autonomous nodes. And I think that's what you were referring to about uh, when you talk about seabed systems. Um, the, the system that BP used uh, on the, uh, the Atlantis field. In fact, this uh, slide, these two slides are courtesy of Fed, but this is actually one of the nodes being deployed on Atlantis. Um, they, uh, node systems have been three commercial surveys shot so far using node systems. The fourth one underway right now offshore Angola. And uh, this, this has some, some interesting possibilities, particularly applicable for deep water operations. <coughs> um, and you know, one of the reasons people have gone for nodes, this is a Cantorell field showing the, the, the principal obstructions in the survey area. There are actually more than a thousand flow lines on Cantorell. And our operations guys, when we were just started the company, this came out to tender. Our operations guys don't want to look at this and this is a job for nodes because there's just no way. The <coughs> longest uninterrupted run, if you were not allowed to overlay a, cable, uh, a flow line, and Pemex is quite sensitive about that, was 200 meters in the, in the whole field. So, uh, and then the uh, Atlantis field, this was shot over the Sixby escarpment. It's a 500 meter escarpment in the Gulf of Mexico. 
and I don't know whether you can see the little red dots here going up the slope here. Uh, quite a challenge for cable-based systems. So. Um, Life of field seismic, BP have pioneered this. So really, they've got two permanent installations and a, a, a three question mark here because the, the work they've been doing on the Shira Ganeshli Azeri complex here uh, was originally planned to be trenched in, but uh, talking to the guys in Baku recently, they're actually just continually rolling the cable and actually trenching them in. So it's quasi permanent. Uh, um, but the Valhalla, which many of you have seen, uh, some fantastic results. Uh, there was a. BP have been very careful about the value benefit or return on investment uh, for Valhalla, but one of the uh, equipment manufacturers, in fact, the equipment manufacturer, who produced the equipment that's been installed on all these three systems, uh, gave a talk down in Brazil a couple of months ago where they estimated uh, a 40 to 1 return on investment so far on the, uh, the Valhalla uh, project. So, uh, interesting numbers, interesting numbers. But only three so far. And uh, it's interesting, really interesting to find out why that hasn't been adopted more widely in the industry so far. Uh, but perhaps the topic for discussion. Uh, fiber optic systems, they're a bit like buses. You wait till the time and three come along at once. Um, there's the wave field, the inside system, uh, been originally developed by Weatherford, uh, been implemented uh, commercially tested, prototype testing uh, this last summer in the North Sea. Uh, PGS system, uh, commercially available as I understand it, and the Stingray system, uh, X. Defence research uh, establishment technology being commercialised uh, here in the UK, uh, all using the same basic premise that all the active electronics is topside, and you simply use uh, fiber optic accelerometers and hydrophones, completely passive system uh, on the seabed. Uh, very, very interesting technology, very high dynamic range uh, systems, uh, but it's not clear yet what the market is going to be for these going forward. So. Uh, I'm going to show some data examples now uh, of uh, ocean bottom uh, seismic data. And there's been an increasing realization uh, in the industry that we are getting better and better data because of the better physics I described earlier. And so this is uh, from uh, SEG abstract uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, again, some work BP did work offshore Trinidad, uh, where you have much, much better definition uh, of structures. OBC data on the left compared to the total stream of data on the right. Uh, underneath this fault, you've got a much, much better continuity of reflector. Um, if you look up in here, you can see this fault here, which is kind of smeared on the total stream of data. Again, this is uh, another example from PDP uh, on the Clare field. Uh, this, is the, uh, oh, this is the best uh, stream of data that was available on Clare uh, previously. That's the OBC data recorded some four years ago. I'll just go back. And quite clearly, you have much, much better definition of uh, what's happening inside the reservoir from the OBC data. This is a little bit older example. It's a very, very good talk. Exxon Mobile gave the SEG a couple of years ago, about four years ago now, where they actually looked at OBC and streamer on the barrel field here in the North Sea. And they actually went back and actually decimated the OBC data so it had the same offset and azimuth distribution as the toad streamer data and they had to reduce it to one quarter of the fold of the toad streamer data to get the same signal to noise ratio because the OBC data was so much better. Um, we had uh, some talk about multi-azimuth data. I, I, I coined the phrase MTO to, to, as, to encompass all the different acronyms and, and my acronym stands for more than one. Um, and so you have the mass geometry uh, used very successfully in, in the Nile Delta area in the Mediterranean by BP and a number of other companies. The wide aperture, toad streamer, rich azimuth, uh, various other flavors that come through. 